Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Hey, hello to everybody. So thrilled that it's Christmas and really glad that I get to spend a little time with you in my home. Ginger's already inside, so welcome. Come on in. We're going to have a good talk today about Christmas. Hi, Ginger. Well, we've brought a lot of our friends here into my we home have. today. Isn't and, it uh, nice? We're going to have some wonderful things to talk about about Christmas. Well, it's great to spend a little bit of Christmas time with you. Thank you. And people have sent in some very fun <laughs> questions. And, and we'll also talk about some very important things, of course. There's yeah. so much great about Christmas to celebrate. Right. Um, but so let's, let's start off with just a fun question. This is Melinda. She says, what's your favorite thing about Christmas? Jesus. <laughs> See, that's the perfect answer. <laughs> that's the thing that we have to really keep in mind is that that's what Christmas is about. Yeah. And to be honest, sometimes people end up frustrating themselves because they get into so many other things they're trying to do for Christmas right. that they forget that Jesus is the center of it and he's the whole reason why we celebrate it. Yeah. Well, you know, that makes me think about all of the people who do get so wound up, so stressed at mm -hmm. Christmas time because they're trying to make everything perfect. Right. And then it becomes a disappointment because it never meets those expectations. Right. It, it, you had family and children and ministry and all <laughs> these things happening all at the same time. How did you balance everything and, and make sure you put the focus where it was meant to be at Christmas? Well, I imagine that everybody's experience with their Christmas traditions or what they do at Christmas is different. But um, mine's a little bit of a journey, I guess. First of all, I grew up in a very dysfunctional home, so Christmas was not a special thing. My dad was really against gift buying. He always felt like people were just trying to get your money. So there was not a lot of gift buying that went on. And if if I got anything for Christmas. It was probably one thing, to be honest. I can't even remember <laughs> even getting anything. I found that as my family developed, that things have to always be changing. And, and I want to share that for people who, it's good to have traditions, but you can't make laws out of them. Oh, they, yeah. can't, they can't become things. Now, we have to do this forever. You know, for a long time, when my husband's mom was alive, and he has you know, a lot of sisters and brothers, and they all had kids, and so there was, it was a large family, and it was very important to her that we all be there on Christmas Eve. Mm. And so for years and years, we all went there on Christmas Eve, and um, then there was a midnight church service at the church that everybody went to, and so everybody stayed up. We tried to keep the kids awake or carry them asleep, and we'd go to the midnight church service, and then get home around maybe two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And so we did that really until the Lord took her home. And by then, a lot of us had grown or growing children of our own, and we really wanted to have our own Christmases so That's far. That's a hard transition, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And then for a lot of years, I don't remember how many, everybody came to our house on Christmas Eve, and we started about 10 o'clock in the morning, and there was a lot of gift giving and eating and more eating and <laughs> laughing and talking, and they stayed however long they wanted to. As my kids got old enough to get married, I wanted to make sure that I didn't pressure them because they now had other responsibilities with their in-laws. I, I, I never wanted to pressure my kids and say, if you're not here on Christmas Eve because this has been our tradition, then right. I'm gonna be mad and upset, I think. So many people do that to their kids, and it's just very, unreasonable, especially considering that we're celebrating the birth of Christ, who tells us to walk in love yeah. and be kind. And so what we ended up doing by the time they were all married was we would still start at 10 o'clock in the morning, but we'd only go until about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So they all had time to go home, get a little bit of rest, and then they would go to their in-laws yeah. on that night because they wanted to be in their own home on Christmas. Then after a while, we moved it to my daughter's house because they all were getting little kids, and her house was more kid-friendly, and they had toys and games, and we did that. 
Well, now this year, for the first time, we're having to change again because now we have grown grandchildren, some of which have to end up working on Christmas Eve. And so we're now doing our family celebration the Sunday before Christmas. Yeah. But my grown children come here sometime a week or two before Christmas, and we have a meal together, and I give them their gifts, and they give me mine because, to be honest, on Christmas Eve, there's so many kids, so many little kids, <laughs> and everybody's unwrapping and throwing paper every which direction <laughs> that it wasn't really enjoyable for us to try to, right. to share our gifts. And so we might play a few games or do something like that. The main thing about Christmas is being together, but remembering not to make it so complicated that you get frustrated trying to have all your perfect meals and making sure you don't offend anybody. And a lot of people even go out and buy gifts that they don't even want to buy and they go in debt to buy them. And, you know, that's not necessary either. Yeah. I love what you're saying that it's okay for traditions to change. Right. Our lives change. Our families change. It's all right for what we right. love at Christmas to change as well. And there will be something else that we right. love. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people are feeling like, and, and, and it's so hard when something maybe has drastically changed. Maybe you've gone through a divorce or you've lost right. a loved one. Um, but to know that in time, new traditions will come up right. that, that you will enjoy again. I know part of Christmas traditions is baking and cooking. and. I thought I'd smell cookies when I yeah. came in today. <laughs> but. Well, you must be imagining things. But... <laughs> I never, I never did that. Yeah, you know, me either. First of all, I was in ministry for most of these years, and I just, I didn't have time. Even when we had Christmas Eve at my house, at Dave and, my and Dave's house, uh, somebody else did the cooking, and they brought it with them. Tell somebody them what else. Dave said about your cookies. Oh, I will. Okay. So <laughs> Dave, Dave asked me what we were going to do on this show, and I said, well, they're going to ask me about what my traditions are. And he said, what are you going to tell them? I said, oh, I'm going to tell them about all the cookies I bake and the pies and the turkey, and he said, are you going to tell them the cookies are invisible? <laughs> <laughs> and so I think I even that. in that, I don't <laughs> want to see people put pressure on themselves yeah. to be some certain kind of person at Christmas that they don't have the gifting or the desire to even do. That is so freeing. <laughs> That's really good. So you don't have to bake cookies if you don't want to. Thank you. Thank, well, actually, when I did bake the cookies, nobody wanted to eat them anyway. So <laughs> I learned that was not my thing. It's just not my thing either. So, you know. <laughs> you, you mentioned your, your upbringing. Was those, those Christmases, especially early in, ha had to be very different and, and very difficult. Was there a time for you that Christmas changed? Was there a time for you that that celebration came, became something that it never was before? Well, when I was younger, you know, Christmas, because of the way I was growing up, yeah. it wasn't really special to me. And I wasn't, you know, my family was not a church going family or a, a, a spiritual family at all. And so obviously when I got into my own relationship with Jesus and learned more, it became more special. But I think all of us have to remember what it's all about because there's just so many other things that go on. People are just really busy at that time of the year. And I hear so many people say, I'm so glad the holidays are over. I mean, don't you hear that? Yeah, you hear it all the I'm time. I'm so glad the holidays are over and we can get back yeah. to normal life. We don't have to let it be like that. Yeah. If we're going to celebrate Jesus' birth, then it needs to be a happy occasion and it can't be if it becomes too complicated. Right. And yeah. you know, I said something a minute ago about not buying gifts, going in debt to buy gifts. Yeah. I really want to encourage people along those lines because there's nothing wrong if you're having a tough time financially on a certain year. There's nothing wrong with going to people that you would normally buy gifts for who, or who might be expecting a gift to just say, I just want to let you know that we're a little tight on money this year and so I'm not going to be able to to buy gifts, but I love you and the time will come when I can do it yeah. again. That's another pressure that people don't need. They don't need to put themselves under the pressure right. of doing that. But you know, Jesus yeah. was the greatest gift. And so the reason we even give gifts to one another at Christmas is because 
He is the greatest gift that has ever been given. Yeah. And so even in giving gifts, we need to remember that. It's not about how much money you spend. It's really about the heart that you put in it and remembering why you do it and making sure that you don't get into family arguments and strife and have everybody angry. It should be a very happy, festive, joyous time of year where we keep Christ the center of it. Yeah, I, I think that's such a great encouragement for everyone who's listening. Um, talk about Dave's joke and, and talking about cookies. There's this question here that, that I love and I, I think you'll appreciate it. And what this, my favorite cookie recipe? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's another one that says, what's your favorite treat at Christmas? Um, but this is from Ashley and she says, do you watch all the Hallmark Christmas movies? <laughs> what's your favorite Christmas movie? I love talking about the Hallmark movies with you because I know in your family uh, yeah. it, it's well, a little bit of a... Everybody likes It's a Wonderful Life, and I like it too, but I'm not the kind of person that can watch it year after year after year after year. As you already know, Dave is just a Hallmark fanatic. I mean, he loves Hallmark movies. Well, I do too, and I thank God that they make a lot of good, clean family movies, yeah. but I can only do so many in a short period of time because I feel like that I always know how they're gonna end five minutes after they start. What? And I don't mean that, you know, like, <laughs> but see my personality, I need a little mystery. I need a, <laughs> so yes, we watch Hallmark Christmas movies, but uh, I can only do so many. <laughs> yeah, and Dave also is big into Christmas music, right? Oh yes, he loves, I mean, Dave, Dave would play Christmas music all, all year round. We. <laughs> You know, we live close to Branson, Missouri, which is a big entertainment hub yeah. in the U.S. It's a fun and so place to be at Christmas. They have all the shows down there. And this year, Dave wants to go. We're going down the second week of December so he can see all the Christmas shows. And ah. I said, Dave, I don't know how many times I can hear somebody sing Jingle Bells in one <laughs> week. We're going to have to come to some agreement here. <laughs> it's all about compromise. But Dave, absolutely. He loves Christmas, he loves the lights, he loves the trees, he loves the movies. You know, they even do, Hallmark does Christmas in July, and they sh and he watches them all July, and <laughs> I mean, we'll have 30 Christmas movies recorded on our <laughs> recording devices. <laughs> and, uh, oh. But it, it is a great time of the year. Well, talk about Branson and their Christmas shows. I do know a, a Christmas joke oh. that is about on that level <laughs> is um, how did Mary and Joseph know Jesus's official birth weight? Because they had a way in the manger. Oh, <laughs> I'll laugh to be polite. <laughs> all right, all right, that's only fair. Um, okay, well, let, let me ask you another question. Um, this question says, what's the best Christmas gift you have ever received? And I think it's interesting what you were just talking about with your perception of Christmas gifts changing because of not getting them when you were young and then knowing what matters and what doesn't. So when you talk about the best gift, you've probably already answered it, right? Yeah, I don't really know that I could come up with one favorite Christmas gift. My children work really hard trying to find something that they really think that I would like. And so corporately, they've gone together a couple different times and bought me a nice piece of jewelry or, you know, but to me, it's not about how much it costs or it's just the love that goes behind it. And, uh, you know, we've gotten to the point now, us, I basically don't really buy any gifts because everybody in my family is old enough that they either want money or gift cards. And it's amazing how many people have gone to that. I mean, you can ask a lot of people and they'd rather get a gift card mm -hmm. than anything because how many times do we shop and shop and shop and go get something for somebody and then it's, it's not even something they like or it doesn't fit them and who knows? I mean, one time I bought several different people a gift card to get a massage and two and three years later, they'd never gone to get them. Mm. So <laughs> I do a lot of, you know, like Visa, American Express, things like that. Now, yeah. I love to give gifts and if I know something that somebody wants, then I will go get that. 
but I don't want to buy things just to be buying them to yeah. fulfill an obligation. I want it to be something that somebody is really going to use. Right. And so and, I'm and all, gift giving is really one of your love languages. It is. It's, I love to do yeah. it. So I love I love that part of Christmas that it's a time to give. And I and I like to also look for people that are outside my family that are maybe financially needy at that time of the year. And I don't just do that at Christmas, but that's a good time to reach out to people yeah. because it is the season of showing love to yeah. one another through gift giving. God showed his love for us through giving the gift of Christ at Christmas. And, and there's the best gift ever. And there's the best gift ever. And we just need to keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. I remember when my kids were young, we were always looking for ways to help them understand the importance. Because, you know, you, ha you have presents and it's it's great fun. and But we also looked for opportunities to help another family or mm -hmm. to carol at a nursing home or right. different things. Um, I, I know you're year-round encouraging people to be a blessing to others all mm -hmm. the time. But I think now is just a, a great opportunity. How would you encourage them to put the focus of the season, not all on themselves. Keep it about Christmas and don't, you know, don't get so many expectations about what people should buy you and well, I bought for you and you didn't buy for me. Those are all the things that really, if we're giving a gift and it's a true gift, then we don't give it to be sure we get something back. It's set people free, hmm. you know, have traditions, but if they need to change, then let them change because it's not about your tradition, <laughs> it's about Jesus. If you can't afford to buy a gift for someone, just explain it to them and don't be embarrassed. Everybody goes through different times like that. The good news is, is we really should have Christmas every day of the year. And by that, I mean, we should celebrate Christ every day of the year. And I, and I feel like that I do that. I like to keep him yeah. the center of my heart, the center of my life all the time. And I don't even think Christmas should be the only time we give gifts. I think we should always be wanting to make people happy. And one of the ways that you can pretty much be assured to make anybody happy is by giving them a nice gift. And we should always be looking out for the poor and the needy and, and, and helping them. And, you know, I think something that would be good to talk about for a minute is maybe people that are alone on Christmas mm -hmm. and how they feel. And, you know, we're sitting here talking about our families and the big families and how to manage all these families, but there are a lot of people that are alone on sure Christmas. Are, yeah. But I want to assure you, if you're one of those people, that you're really not alone because Jesus is always with you. I know that maybe that's not the same, you think, as having people around you. But, you know, if you are by yourself, maybe you could take the initiative to go find somebody else that's by themselves, and instead of sitting waiting for an invitation, be the invitation, be the one who gives the invitation. Or you can go help out at a shelter where they're serving meals. You can do something to get involved in another way if you don't have families like we're talking about. Yeah, that, that's a great encouragement because there are so many people who um, find this to be a, a really difficult time. Right. There's a lot of people that think about suicide this, this time of the year, or I'm yeah. sure if you're really ill, it makes it even more difficult mm -hmm. in that way because you feel so bad. And so it's a joyous time for a lot of people and probably for some it's it's sad, but we always need to make it something that in our heart we remember that God gave us the greatest gift of all, which is Jesus. Yeah. I think there's something so beautiful in Christmas moving right into Easter, you know, through the calendar because the fact that Christ came as that tiny, innocent baby, that he was willing to lay down everything, right. the, the keys to the kingdom right. to become a human, to understand what we've been through, and, and then to grow into a man who would sacrifice everything right. for us. And it's so easy to forget all of that with everything happening, right. and, or to just see Jesus as a baby in a manger and, right. yeah. and not think about the detail of of what this season means to us and what he right. has really done for us. I don't know that we in our finite minds can ever really comprehend mm -hmm. the gift that God gave us. And I certainly don't think we will ever understand the depth 
of the suffering mm. that Jesus went through when he died on the cross for us and took all of our sins upon himself. And uh, I was thinking the other day about when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mm. You know, so we actually have, yes, the Son of God, but God himself, because it was God in Christ. And so we actually have God taking that suffering on himself so we could be free. And so I always think if Jesus did all that for us, the least we can do is be happy on Christmas and not be grumpy and getting in strife over not getting the gift we wanted or somebody not being able to come to our house that year that we wanted them to come. It needs to be a time where we honor him yeah. and just not let it get out of focus. Yeah, and make a decision right. that, that we hold on to that yeah. commitment that we make. Well, Joyce, I know that um, you have a, a little holiday message for yeah. everyone. It was so nice of you to invite us into your home and oh, thank you. fun to spend some time with you. We appreciate it very much. Well, thank you. I thank you for coming too. Well, I'm so glad that you've been able to spend this time with me here in my home, and I hope that we said some things that blessed you and perhaps even set you free in some areas where you had felt like you were kind of in bondage and didn't want to be anymore. And I want to pray for you, but then I don't want you to leave because I have something very important I want to talk to you about. Father, I pray for everybody concerning their Christmas holidays that they'll all have a wonderful time, that everybody will be relaxed, and rested, and that they'll do what they need to do, but not get so caught up in so many things that it becomes a burden to them. Help everybody remember that Christmas is about you, and it's not about anything else. Let them keep Jesus as the center of this holiday. We ask it in Jesus' name. Now, you know, we've been talking about Jesus today, and many of you have Jesus in your life. You have him in your heart, you've received him as your Savior and your Lord. But I know that there's also many watching who have not. And really, we talk about being saved or being born again. The Bible says you must be born again if you're going to spend eternity with God. And that really means that you just need to be sorry for living a life of sin. But more than that, you have to be willing to turn away from it. The word repentance means to go in a completely different direction. And if you're ready to admit today that you are a sinner and that you're ready to walk away from that and you want Jesus in your life, you want salvation from him and you want to spend the rest of your life serving him and you'd like to pray with me, I'm going to pray a very short but an important prayer and I want you to pray it along with me. And then there's going to be a number on the bottom of your screen that you can call and one of our operators can pray with you further. We'll send you a, a booklet that we have about how to get your new life with Christ started right. But the greatest gift is the gift of Jesus. And if you do not have him in your life or in your heart, he wants to give you the gift of himself today. And believe me, it will change your life. So I'm going to pray few words at a time, and you can pray out loud following me. Father, I love you, and I believe that Jesus is your son and that you sent him to earth to live and die for me. I know that I'm a sinner, and I'm sorry for the way I've lived. And I ask you to forgive me and I repent, I'm ready to turn and go in a different direction. I want to be a follower of Christ. I want to learn his ways and be all that you want me to be. So Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, God yourself. I believe you lived and died for me and I believe that you rose from the dead. And I ask you to come into my heart now and receive me as your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, to all of our friends, and you are our friends and a very special friend, I want to wish you a very merry and a blessed Christmas holiday. 
Remember that Jesus is the reason for the season, and let's keep our focus on Him. God bless you. This community likes boys, so they want their boys to go to school first. The girls, they don't have any, any value when it comes to education for them. So if they can get some money for her and not have the burden of having to care for her, it helps the family. The flags that you see on the homes over my shoulder represent a long-standing tradition that is very difficult on girls. As soon as a very young girl reaches puberty and she's of childbearing years, you'll see these flags above their houses representing the fact that a young girl is available to a man, essentially on the market, up for sale. And at that point, her life changes dramatically. So what they do is they take him out of school and they'll actually go through different activities, teaching them how to cook, how to be a, a wife in the, in the home. But part of it is also how to please a man. And that's through, you know, normal things in the house, but also sexually. So they teach them different things about sexuality and so on. So we are doing anything that we can to help people understand the value of girls. That's the key. And helping these girls by taking them into a program <laughs> called Imagine Hope. If they would live with us for six months and we would have devotions, lead them to the Lord, really mentor them in how to be a godly woman, and then at the same time teach them how to do some skills, basic things like jewelry making or whatever it is, that they can have some kind of an income that they can bring to their families. This is a good hat. Were you afraid when you thought that you were going to have to be married? Some of my friends, they are already married now, but they are used to suffer in that marriage. So if myself, I was afraid to be married while I'm still young, but because of this program, my mom, she didn't take me to the marriage, but she bring me here so that I can proceed with my education, so that I can help her in future change our situation. I, I'm so grateful. I wish I could bring everyone here and let them see the impact of what's happening. Um, and I'm grateful for it because we should give and we should give to those that we don't benefit us. And I think that's what Hand of Hope does and, and we're grateful for that. We are helping young women like this all over the world. <laughs> Help us to guide, restore, and love young girls. Your designated gift today, if you choose, can go to Project Girl. Or you can give toward water, you can give toward feeding. And do something that you know will make a difference. Well, here at the ministry, we strive to help people both here in the U.S. and around the world. We do that by providing help such as the gospel, medical care, clean water, feeding programs. It's like being part of one big family, and today I'm inviting you to join the family. If you're not a partner with Joyce Meyer Ministries, we would so appreciate your commitment to become one. We don't ask for or require any certain amount of money. All that we ask you to do is pray and then do what you believe that God has asked you to do and to do it consistently. It's the consistency that is really important to us because we're consistently on television daily around the world and so we need consistent partners that are going to stick with us. And not only will you be helping preach the gospel through television, but all these many, many thousands upon thousands of outreaches, people being fed and clean water being provided and medical care and putting books into prisons and all the things that Jesus tells us not to forget to do. 
And so I believe that you will pray and that if God puts it on your heart to join the family, I believe that you will. So thank you for your consideration. God bless you.